All right, and welcome back to Mechanical Systems Design. Uh, in this video, we'll review some ideas about technical writing and then do some exercises. You'll need to do the topic reading on writing first, or a lot of this won't make much sense. And for the exercises, you'll want pencil, paper, and most importantly, a partner. It's the only way to go. So why are we talking about this? Well, most really important communications are still written. And uh, especially the summaries or abstracts of those communications are read. And they're read by decision makers for designers, like uh, your boss, your client, an investor. And the writing of those sections needs to be excellent in order to convince those people that your design is what you think it is and it's worth developing. So this is an essential professional skill and you'll need uh, to have it to be a successful designer. Uh, the purpose of short form technical communication is to convince your reader of your understanding of your design using logic and fact. And uh, we've talked a lot about how to understand and interpret mechanical designs in this class already. And that's the kind of reasoning that we'd like to apply in this context. You want to avoid personal stories, emotions, or design chronology in this context, because they can distract from uh, the core rational message and sometimes can leave a reader thinking maybe there's some manipulation going on here. Maybe there isn't actually a, a solid case for this design. And you'll know that your, uh, your uh, writing is successful if it does convince your audience. Uh, one frame that I'd like to, to throw in here that's a little different from the way most people, uh, most beginning writers think about writing is that writing is really about changing neurons, not characters on the page. Uh, you know, writing is only superficially the process of striking keys, right? Mostly it's a process of improving your thinking. You may think that uh, you know what you want to say and you'll just write down, you know, sit down at your computer and write it out. But actually what you'll find is as you try to write it out, you don't know what you want to say. And some of your ideas were conflicting or incomplete or just wrong. And the process of forcing yourself to write that out into a linear logical argument will reveal those imperfections and gaps and redundancies and allow you to uh, learn what it is you really it'll improve what you think about your design and uh, it will focus you on the most important things you want to say and it will um, improve uh, your ability to explain your design to other people. So um, the good text that occurs at the end of the writing process is simply the evidence of good thinking but that good thinking requires the writing process to develop. Uh, relatedly, um, one way to think of writing is taking bad text and editing it into good text. Good writers are really good editors. So all writing starts out bad. It all starts out with flaws of some kind. And uh, it's important not to be tentative at the beginning of this process. You wanna just get something on the page. And then if you critically review it, make it better over and over, eventually you're going to get good text. And of course, there's a, an analogy to design. So this follows a similar process. It's an iterative process with um, idea generation and uh, simplified analysis and more detailed analysis. Um, and you'll see that, in, that those analogous components as we go through the process. All right, so the first element here that you'll use in, in, at various stages is brainstorming. And, you do tend to do more brainstorming at the beginning of the process. So one way to, to use this is to break the ice. Uh, a lot of people get anxious and you've heard of writer's block. Sometimes people freeze up. Let go of all that when you first start writing and just put stuff on the page. You have some ideas about your design, write them down, uh, big and small. You might have a thought about this little feature and, and its minor role. You might have an overarching theory of the design. Just Put all that stuff on the page. And as you go through the, the brainstorming process, try to uh, span the space. So, so you think about 
oh, if I address the goals and all the, if I explain what the features are and give it a rationale for each, and if I explain the evaluation and all those things. And as you do this, um, you know, you might riff off of uh, ideas on the page and try to find some key ideas that might emerge. So secretly, as you've been designing, you've been thinking about all those things in the back of your mind, and now you want to draw them out into text. All right, the next part of the process here is outlining. And in, in outlining, you will organize your ideas. Uh, the purpose here is to try to find a logical flow uh, from one idea to the next. And you're gonna need to iteratively try different ordering of your ideas because inevitably uh, the first thing you try, you realize, oh, in order to introduce this idea, I need to already know this idea. And so I need to move them around. Um, as you try to put things into a logical flow, you also see there are gaps in your logic, ideas that are needed to understand the rest of the document. Or uh, there are repetitions of something that's really the same idea and you only need to say it once. Uh, and you, you might find that there are some assertions that are unsupported and you need to find the evidence that, uh, that's needed there. Uh, and evidence, of course, in, in the form of things like in the results of tests or uh, the uh, application of engineering models. And it, for beginning writers, outlining is a very important stage and it's often underutilized. Um, it's way more efficient to organize your thoughts at the outlining stage when you just have little sentence fragments or phrases uh, than when you're dealing with moving around whole sentences that have grammar and you know all that stuff. Um, so get the develop the logical backbone of your argument here and the rest will go more smoothly and the overall editing process will be faster. So you know you start by putting a bunch of stuff on the page and then you try to massage it into something uh, coherent. Uh, after you have a, a pretty good outline and you don't see any problems with the logic, try to write out sentences in paragraphs. And here's where you'll uh, apply, you know, proper grammar and spelling and tense. You know, you usually like to keep things that you did previously in the past tense and things that just are universal truths in the present tense. Uh, Use topic sentences to define the purpose of a paragraph. Be concise, saying the same thing clearly with fewer words is better. And as you do this, uh, necessarily you'll introduce more texture and uh, context to the ideas. And you might find that actually the logical flow has changed. And um, if, if the logic changes or you find you're missing ideas, go back to outlining. Uh, you can even scrap the text you've written. Um, if you find yourself really getting hung up on every sentence as you go in your wordsmithing and, and spending a lot of time on it, try drafting the document first and then coming back at it because uh, sometimes that drafting process will reveal problems in flow that are more easily resolved uh, through outlining and you don't want to get too caught up. And, you know, of course, you want to avoid uh, distracting misuse of, of terms or misspellings that give, can give the wrong impression that um, you didn't give the document care. And finally, uh, editing. Editing is where you'll spend the vast majority of your time in writing. And basically editing is looking at what you have with a critical eye, trying to find problems, trying to resolve those problems by changing the text and repeating, doing that over and over and over again until your text is clear and logical and consistent. So uh, critically reviewing the text is something beginning writers have trouble with. Um, it's hard to see the problems in your own writing because you know at some point that was what you thought. And so uh, you really have to step outside yourself, look back with a critical eye to be able to find those issues and you need to see the problems, you need to see the flaws so that you can learn from them. And remember that a huge part of this process is, is changing your thinking about your design and how to explain it. And so to, to help generate the existence, sometimes it's good to step away from your draft and come back after a few hours of doing something else. Uh, 
And it's, I also find it very helpful to read it out loud. It, it, you process the information differently if you hear a voice saying it or if you're saying it yourself. It's also super helpful, especially at the end stages, to ask a friend to review your document. Uh, they will see things that you didn't notice and they will have confusion that you couldn't anticipate. When you're reviewing, you may see little imprecisions or little gaps and think, ah, that's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to leave that. Don't do that. Drill down. Those little imprecisions often paper over much bigger flaws in logic that can really undermine the, the strength of your argument. So wherever you see a little something, pull on that thread and see, see what happens. If you can't resolve it quickly, that's a sign that there's something bigger at play. And finally, um, there's a, a, a great old quote, uh, whenever you feel an impulse to perpetrate a piece of exceptionally fine writing, obey it and then delete it before you're sending your manuscript to press. <laughs> um, you, you really wanna keep your document streamlined, clear and as concise as possible. And so in this editing process, things will start out a bit jumbled and eventually through iterative rewriting, re-outlining, re-brainstorming, you'll refine things into a smooth, clean, logical flow. Um, just to emphasize this one more time, editing is an iterative process. You will repeatedly rewrite your text. Uh, if the sentence is unclear, hit enter and rewrite it from scratch. And do that over and over again until you're happy with the clarity of your sentence. If the flow starts to get bad as you reread a paragraph, hit enter a few times, re-outline the paragraph, and then rewrite the sentences. If you're, you find that boy, this isn't the way I was thinking about it originally, logically come up with new ideas that are consistent and logical. And you might be tentative. A lot of uh, beginning writers are afraid of throwing away text because it feels like it took so long to generate that text, but that's not true. What's really happening in that process of editing is you are learning about your design and how to explain it. And that's happening in your brain and deleting text won't change that. And so uh, the, it may have taken you hours to write a paragraph, but deleting it and rewriting it will not take hours. And very, very likely the new paragraph that you create will be much better because you have gained much more clarity on what it is that you need to say since the first draft of that paragraph. And, uh, of course, editing takes a long time. Uh, the, the downside is it, may, it, it can take many, many iterations uh, to get things right. But the positive spin on this is that no matter what you begin with, with enough editing, you can create good, clear, convincing text. All right, so now we're gonna do a couple of uh, quick uh, writing exercises. Um, so get your paper and pencil and a friend to talk this over with. Here's the first one. What we're going to do is read this rationale from a design report and critique it. What could be improved? Um, what's good about it? What would you do differently? All right. So take about two minutes to read this. Think about that and discuss it with your partner and then uh, come back. So press pause now. All right, you have some ideas for improvement. Some things that I see are that it's very uh, vague. Um, it's well suited to the task to its simplicity and manufacturing and safety factor. What about its manufacturing is simple? Um, it's also repetitious. We say the safety factor is good. And then there's a whole sentence that says the safety factor is two. So it's both repetitious and has low content. All right, here's uh, another example. Take a moment to read this, discuss it with your partner, and then come back and, and we can share some quick thoughts. And this should take about three minutes. So press pause now. All right, 
So you have some ideas? Uh, what I see is that this story is mostly about the process that was used. It was mostly about chronology. But for the purposes of a technical report, what we wanna know is what do you have? What is your design? And why is that design good? Um, sometimes uh, the results of a test can help provide evidence that a, a certain change would be bad. But talking about um, each step in the process doesn't convince us that what you ended up with is effective. All right, let's take a look at this one and uh, discuss it with your partner and come back in about three minutes. You can press pause now. All right, so this rationale seems to be in pretty good shape, actually. Um, so there's a, a fairly clear description of the major design choices and why, right? Where it's got these arms, they're aligned a certain way because it eliminates bending. Um, you know, there's this thing about moving around to avoid interference with the knot, and that introduces bending with an, in a growing moment, and therefore the cross section grows as well. Those sorts of things. Um, this is a pretty good uh, logical explanation of what the design is, why it's good using mechanical systems design concepts. All right. So the next exercise is an editing exercise. So here, um, imagine that you have written this sentence in your fa fast brainstorming, outlining, then drafting uh, activities. And now you want to edit it and make it clear and concise. So take a look at this text and then try drafting your own version. This should take about three or four minutes, all right? You can press pause now. All right, so perhaps you noticed that uh, there's a fair amount of wordiness here and it might be possible to say the same things in fewer words. And it, here's one version of that. The testing mass comprises a steel cylinder with a radial hole through one end. Same content, far fewer words, better for technical writing. All right, here's another example. Read this, think about it, and then try to write uh, a version of your own that's improved. Should take, again, about three or four minutes. All right, here again, we can say everything in fewer words. We chose steel because it is dense, cheap, and easily machined. All right, here's another example. This is from um, the failure mode estimation section of the report. So the, the prompt is, in a few words, how will your part fail uh, when overloaded? So take a look and, and think about how you can improve it. Okay, so, so here, uh, there just isn't very much information, right? This is quite vague. So it would be improved by adding some more information like the inside surface of the fillet at the rope connection feature will yield. All right, so those are some examples of how you might edit text to make it better. Um, in our next video, we will have the project to launch. Happy designing and editing of your reports.